Hello everyone and welcome to this quick dungeon guide for Heroic or Mythic Waycrest Manor. Waycrest Manor is a place that likes to change which doors are open and which are closed every run, so you cannot always go the same path through the dungeon every time. However, as long as you look at your map, you will not get lost. If doors on the first floor are closed, you'll often have to go upstairs to find the open doors. If you are ever given the chance between going left to witches or right to pig, you should always go left as there is less trash and you can go right into the boss fight. For this video, I will be explaining the dungeon going to witches first. All the trash in the start is just basic mobs that are easy to kill. After this, you will encounter a runic disciple. Her ascension ritual is the most important one to interrupt as it will transform her and give her a new ability set. Her spellbind cast will silence any players it hits for a few seconds, and spectral talisman will place a buff on a mob that decreases the damage they take. This is a magic effect and can be removed. For the enthralled guard, the tank should make sure to face this mob away from the group to avoid it leaving everyone. At the bottom of the stairs, you'll meet a bunch of frogs and a caster. Make sure to interrupt the drain essence cast and look out for the frogs when they die because they will explode shortly after death and disorient anyone standing inside the green swirls. Then you'll be at the first boss, the Heart's Bane Triad. Only the witch that is big needs to be tanked, in DPS. Do not attack the other witches as they just take 99% reduced damage and do not have an aggro table yet. Throughout the fight, the witches change who is in power so the tank has to be ready to pick up the witch that gets buffed. Each witch has an aura that applies a debuff to the party when active. First up is Sister Selina. Her aura reduces all healing done. Make sure to interrupt Soulbolt. If a player gets mind controlled, make sure to DPS them to break her spell. Next is Milady. Her aura will apply a stacking debuff to players that applies shadow damage every second. When she is active, make sure to jump or move side to side so you only ever have one stack or else the healer can get quickly overwhelmed. Interrupt Ruinous Bolt Everyone, look out for a purple circle surrounding a party member and stay out of it. If this debuff expires or is dispelled, then it will do heavy damage to anyone within the circle, so healers, make sure not to dispel this debuff unless the player is by themselves. Finally, Briar will become active. Her aura deals physical damage to anyone that damages her. Make sure to interrupt Bramble Bolt, and healers have to watch out for her Jagged Nettles cast. This is a non-dispellable debuff that deals physical damage to the target until they are healed above 90% of their max health, so healers need to focus heal this person to get rid of the debuff. Once they are dead, continue through the open door into the hallway. The tank should make sure to drag mobs out of any candles placed on the ground as it gives any enemy in it a buff. For Bewitched Captains, make sure to interrupt his Spirited Defenses cast and always face him away from other players as he does a frontal cleave. Then continue into the courtyard. The only mob to worry about are the Coven Thorn Shapers. Just make sure to interrupt every Effigy Reconstruction cast or it will full heal all nearby Effigies. And don't stand in any roots on the ground. They also cast a spell called Soul Fetish that applies a buff to a random mob. It can stack up to 5 times and jumps to another mob if the current one dies. You can't interrupt this but it is still more important to interrupt effigy reconstruction if effigies are around. It is okay if a cast gets off because it is a magic effect and can be removed off of mobs. Tanks should just be very aware of how many stacks of this buff a mob has because the more stacks they have, the more damage it will do. And this buff can jump to even the mini boss in the room, which is something you really do not want to happen. So in order to avoid something like that happening, do not pull her with the rest of the mobs. The Thorn Guard doesn't do much except for it enrages when it reaches low health, and when it dies, it will explode after a short time. So do not stand in the brown circle spawned under its body. After this trash, you will face a mini-boss called Matron Brindle. She just does party-wide damage and spawns thorns on the ground, so don't stand in any brown swirls. And you'll be at the soul-bound Goliath. This boss has a buff that continuously stacks throughout the fight called Soul Harvest, and it increases the boss's damage. It is the tank's job to manage this throughout the fight by bringing the boss over the fires that appear during the fight. Around 7-10 to 10 stacks is a good time to bring it through the fire. When the boss steps on the fire, it will begin to lose all stacks of Soul Harvest. While the boss is disoriented, it will be doing party-wide fire damage, so the healer should make sure to watch everyone's health. Everyone should watch out for spirits because they will move towards you and deal damage if they reach you, and they only spawn while the effigy is on fire. Because of this, you don't want to constantly pull the boss through fire due to the continuous party-wide damage it would cause. Tanks also need to watch out for the boss's crush cast as it will do heavy physical damage. Finally, the boss will occasionally trap a random player inside a thorn, so DPS should switch targets immediately to free the player. After this, continue towards the next boss. The mobs you really have to watch are the Devouring Maggots. You want to make sure to interrupt their Infest cast. 
If you don't, it will place a debuff on a player that spawns maggots when it expires. At the boss room, I recommend pulling all the trash into the hallway so that no one accidentally pulls the boss, and it is best to not pull the entire room all at once. You will have to clear this room though, as you do not want to be fighting trash and the boss. Here you will find some pallid gorgers. These just do a frontal cone called Wretch, so the tank should face them away from the group. While casting, they will not move, so the tank should make sure to move away. The only other mob to worry about is the Banquet Steward, as they will do a cast called Dinner Bell, which makes a brown swirl appear on the ground around the mob. Anyone within it when the cast finishes will be silenced, so make sure to interrupt it if possible. Now you are faced with Rawl the Gluttonous. The tank should make sure to always be a melee range of the boss or it will AoE everybody. Most of this boss's abilities are frontal cones in whichever direction he is facing, so everyone should make sure to move out of the way if you see the boss casting. And since the boss doesn't move while casting, the tank is free to move too. DPS should make sure to kill any goos that spawn. Just be quick to move when they die because they do explode. After a while, the boss will call his servants. DPS should immediately switch targets and begin to kill and slow the servants before they get to the boss. If they reach him, the boss will gain a permanent buff that stacks per servant eaten to increase his damage. After this boss, continue to the cellar which is just to your left. If you find yourself at the witches here instead of the pig, there is another cellar entrance just down the hall from them. In the cellar, there is more trash and one mini-boss, Matron Alma. Just make sure to interrupt her ruinous volley to prevent party-wide damage, and look out for her decaying touch cast, as it will place a debuff on a random player. Again, if anyone is in the purple circle around the player, when it expires, they will take heavy shadow damage. There will be a hole in the wall in the middle of the room. Go through here and follow the stairs down. Clear the room of trash and you're at the next boss. To pull the boss, just simply have someone attack Lady or Lord Waycrest. Lord Waycrest will jump into the arena. Tanks, watch out for Wasting Strike as it will do nature damage and apply a dot. Everyone needs to watch out for Virtuant Pathogen, which places a disease debuff on a random player dealing damage over time and placing a green circle around them. Anyone inside this circle when the buff expires will gain Virtuant Pathogen. Additionally, when this debuff expires, it places a green swirl on the ground that explodes after 4 seconds. So if you are affected by this debuff, you want to move away from other party members. Lady Waycrest will continuously heal Lord Waycrest to full, giving him a stacking damage and haste buff, so his abilities hit harder over time. While fighting Lord Waycrest, Lady Waycrest will occasionally spawn multiple purple swirls on the ground, Make sure to avoid these or you'll take shadow damage. After healing Lord Waycrest for the third time, Lady Waycrest will jump into the fight. The tank needs to make sure to pick her up immediately and make sure to interrupt all her racking cord casts. After that, continue into the trench and the gloom hounds here will randomly jump to players so make sure everyone jumps down. Then you continue down the tunnel and you're at the final boss. Gorok Tull will spawn death-touched slavers throughout the fight. The tank should make sure to pick these up as soon as they spawn. They will also occasionally jump to the furthest player in the room. When they jump onto a player, they will do damage to anyone within 5 yards of that player, so ranged players should make sure to stay spread out to prevent AoE damage. But what everyone needs to watch for is their Death Lens cast, which will stun a random player and deal heavy shadow damage. While this cast can't be interrupted and the ad cannot be stunned, CC effects do work on it and can be used to interrupt its cast. If none of these are available to your party, the healer should make sure to focus heal the affected player. However, once killed, the boss can resurrect them with his Dread Essence cast, which happens at 100 mana. You can prevent this though, because throughout the fight, a NPC will be throwing these potions into the area that you can pick up by running over them. Whoever picks it up can then throw the potion onto the dead body of the slaver to permanently get rid of it. Since only one potion spawns at a time, you want to stack up the bodies of the slavers so they are all dying in the same spot, and you don't want to use it until he begins his Dread Essence cast. This way you will not run out of potions and you will always be able to burn the bodies before he can resurrect them. Other than that, you just interrupt every Dark and Lightning cast from the boss. And that is Waycrest Manor on Heroic or Mythic Difficulty. I hope this video has helped you out, and as always, thank you very much for watching, and I hope to see you next time.